Today in Philadelphia, yet another bullet riddled car. A father shot dead at a gas station. A 14 and 10 year old survived. A little more than 100 miles away, President Biden defended his record on crime ahead of this year's midterms. When it comes to public safety in this nation, the answer is not defund the police, it's fund the police. His administration's plan to curb gun violence includes $13 billion over the next five years to hire more police officers, $3 billion to help courts clear backlogs, and a 13% increase in the ATF's budget for new investigators to help cities trace firearms and analyze ballistics. The president also no, hoping to build on federal gun safety legislation Congress passed earlier this summer. I'm determined to ban assault weapons in this country. He's also calling out the GOP lawmakers who suggested defunding the FBI following the search of former President Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate. There's no place in this country, no place, for endangering the lives of law enforcement. Republicans are blaming Democrats and lenient prosecutors for the crime surge. We need to be more concerned with helping the victims of crime than in placating the perpetrators of crime. During the pandemic, firearm-related injuries nationwide rose 34 percent, deaths 28 percent. In New York City, shootings also spiked during COVID, but are still much less frequent than in the 1970s. How does crime now in New York City compare to what it was back then? It's not comparable. That's when Curtis Sliwa first organized a volunteer group called the Guardian Angels to patrol subways and neighborhoods. You're beginning to see that we're receding back to a point where there was lawlessness and anarchy. And the gun debate is heating up once again here in New York. A ban on guns in so-called sensitive areas like Times Square takes effect this week. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.